Marvel has its fair share of overpowered characters. Sorcerers who can change reality, surfers who are silver, galaks that are tuss, the Hulk. Uh, but DC, DC is a whole other level of OP, like anime levels of OP. Superman, Martian Manhunter, Darkseid, Swamp Thing. But there's some that are gods, I mean like close to a capital G god in a like that Jehovah sense, yikes. And I'm talking about one of the oldest superheroes that I can think of. One that honestly ought to show up in Black Adam or something else very soon. I'm talking about the Spectre, a ghost, a dead cop, or the right hand of God Almighty himself. Well, today we're going to find out. I'm Dan Unthan, and this is the Doomcast. Look, thanks again for watching. Do me a favor, click subscribe and the bell over there. I make one of these videos once a week and they're all great, so don't miss any of them. Now, the Spectre was created in 1940 by Superman co-creator Jerry Siegel and possibly by Bernard Bailey. Well, it's not clear whether or not he was just the penciler and had nothing to do with the character itself. More Fun Comics saw the Spectre debut in issue 52 in 1940. And More Fun was the same book where Dr. Fate, Green Arrow, Aquaman, and Superboy would eventually show up. Uh, Siegel brought the Spectre to life as a dead cop named Jim Corrigan, a guy who was murdered, stuffed into a barrel of cement, and then just tossed into the water by a guy named Gat Benson. But then a being not unlike God called The Voice sends his soul back to Earth and refuses to allow him to die. Yeah, sorry Yusuke Yurameshi, this guy is the original spirit detective. Now, Corrigan was sent back as the Spectre to save his kidnapped girlfriend Clarice from Benson. And the Spectre turned out to be able to assume an intangible ghost form and sought vengeance against those people who had killed the original Corrigan, uh, but then he also sought out and intended to eliminate all evil as well. Corrigan wore a costume with a green hood and a cape and ghostly makeup, but eventually the Spectre, and later just the ghost form of the Spectre, became a member of the Justice Society, until superhero comics had kind of fallen out of favor in the mid-1940s. But as his origin went, the Spectre would not be allowed to die. The Spectre in the JSA was revived by editor Julius Schwartz in the 1950s uh, when Comics Code cracked down on horror and sci-fi comics. Earth 2 became the established home of the original Justice Society as well as the Spectre, and the Spectre eventually began starring in solo stories in the middle 60s. Gardner Fox, the legendary DC writer, made him a literal spirit of God's vengeance and made the character virtually omnipotent. No more costume, no more makeup, just a projection that comes out of uh, Corrigan. Kind of like a stand in JoJo. Actually, exactly like it. And when I say omnipotent, I, I mean it. There's nothing that the character couldn't do at that point. Uh, in his de re-debut in Showcase 60, he could go from being a ghost that could change size to a disembodied spirit that, in this same issue, grows several thousand feet tall, also contains a massive bomb, which apparently is just one grenade somehow, turns back time like reality is a videotape, then blocks, swallows, and spits back thousands of bullets at once, wraps people up in their own guns, then travels to every magic site on Earth whilst being various sizes, then he fights a demon named Asmodeus, possessing a guy who looks like Dr. Phil, and then seals him back in the ast astral plane. Now if that sounds nuts, it is, because the Spectre is notoriously hard to write, even for people like Gardner Fox, because the Spectre is able to do anything, there were no limits. Essentially the same problem that people had with Doctor Strange. So he became a deus ex machina for the most part. Joe Orlando revived the character in the 70s as a cruel angel of vengeance against common criminals. Alan Moore had the Spectre fight and lose to the great evil beast in Swamp Thing. Uh, even Moon Knight creator Doug Menk had uh, a stint riding him, although substantially reined in. In the early 90s, John Ostrander succeeded in making Spectre stories really relatable by using him as both hero, but mostly as a framework to explore higher level concepts of evil and sin like genocide at a national scale, the death penalty on innocent people, and other forms of storytelling, but he firmly established Spectre as an angel, forever bound to embody God's wrath and vengeance. And Corrigan had at this point become much more ancillary to the character. In the same way Mark Wade and Alex Ross's Kingdom Come, the Spectre is sort of the ghost of superhero future to preacher Norman McKay. 
Later, Hal Jordan briefly took on the mantle of the Spectre before returning to the world of the living. The Spectre was a pivotal character in Jeff John's JSA, even single-handedly devouring the near-omnipotent Elder God King of Tears summoned by Johnny Sorrow. Later in Day of Vengeance, the Spectre commits one of his most OP acts of all time, the complete elimination of magic from the DC Universe. He's convinced by Eclipso that magic is evil because it defies God's will. So the Spectre destroys thousands of magicians, and seals Dr. Fate, the Phantom Stranger, kills the wizard, wizard Shazam, fights Black Adam and Shazam himself, and destroys Atlantis. And despite the Spectre taking on a new host in Crispus Allen, and appearing sporadically in things like the New 52 and Blackest Night, um, they're still very underused, well, until we get a solid JSA revival again. At least that's my prediction. And with them appearing in Black Adam, that's pretty likely. Eventually, it seems like we might get God's Avenging Angel back on the page or the screen with some regularity, but that's the trick with Omnipotence, right? The same problem with Superman and Doctor Strange. The character only works well as an exploration of broader human foibles. And while those kinds of stories can look really exciting on the page, they can also end up a little like the Spectre himself, simply too powerful to control correctly. Well, thanks everybody for watching. This has been the Doomcast. We'll see you next week.